Brad Sumrock. Brad, we met at uh, War Room um, not too long ago. And I think, did we meet through Pete Vargas? Well, I think we did. I think we did meet through Pete Vargas. Um, great, great guy. A great friend that I've known for ah, 20 plus years at this point. Um, and uh, there are a lot of things that I find interesting about you, but um, we'll kind of slow walk into them. The only thing I don't like is that your name is Brad. And generally speaking, I don't hang out with other Brads because I feel like it steals my Brad spotlight. Um, but I had to make an exception this time because you have a really cool business and a lot of experience that I think would be helpful to a lot of people here. Well, I, I noticed here in the interview that my name is Bradley and I, nobody calls me Bradley except my mom. So, like, <laughs> and my mom's not even here with us anymore. So, like, I'm Brad, you're Brad, it's all good. You see, I have the op- <laughs> I had the opposite. When I met you, I'm like, dude, you have the coolest name, man. <laughs> well, you know, it just tells you something about my arrogance, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but jokes aside, you, uh, um, you, you are really good at multifamily real estate. And I want to dive into some investment strategies with you. But um, outside of um, the, I think you, you have over 8,000 units that are multifamily buildings um, that you are responsible for Mm -hmm. and you're syndicating deals on a routine basis. So you're actively investing. um, And that is a a big part of your life. But on top of that, you're teaching people that business. You have an education business. That's an eight figure education business to teach people that. Is that all accurate so far? That's that's you, you hit it. You hit the nail on the head. So one of my favorite things and one of my least favorite things in life are people that try to teach things when they don't do them or when they used to do them and no longer do them um, because things change. So I love talking to people that are actively investing and actively teaching. I think it's a really relevant frame for anybody listening or watching because you get to learn from an active, successful investor um, and the proof is in the pudding. And part of that is that you, you built a, a big education company helping people do the same. So before we get into the real estate investment side of things, can you tell me when you started the education company and kind of what the framework is for it? Yeah. So, you know, the little, a little history there is we, uh, before, long before we started an education company, um, we became our own success story. And, and, and I love what you said about people that teach. And I agree because there's so many people teaching, maybe they did one or two deals and they you know, they had some success, but, um, you know, my background is engineer, MBA, struggled in corporate America for 14 years. And I actually started as a real estate investor by going to a real estate seminar. And at the time I was like totally skeptical because up until then I was just thinking about formal education. I didn't understand the value of seminars and self-education. And so, you know, I was very skeptical, probably the most skeptical one in the room, went to a seminar. And eight months later, after going to a seminar, and then engaging that organization as a mentee, they offered me a mentorship program. I didn't tell anybody about it. Like I was embarrassed, right? (laughs) And so my first real estate investment, Brad, was in 2002. And it was a 32 unit apartment building it wasn't a single family home, a fourplex, a duplex, a tenplex. It was 32 doors under one roof. Wow. And and that thing just put cash in my pocket like clockwork. And so that was eight months after the seminar. I took the seminar in 01, bought my first deal in 02, bought my second deal in 03, bought my third deal and retired in 05. So like within three years of you know, being skeptical, going to a seminar, buying my first deal within three years, I I was making more money from my apartment investments in terms of cash flow and paying less in tax because of the uh, preferred depreciation benefits that we get in real estate. And so within three years between 02 and 05, <clears throat> I made enough money and was making enough money that I quit my job. And so at that point, Um, my original real estate mentor actually brought me onto his team and I was mentoring people with him for six years from 06 to 2012. And I was still accumulating deals and doing deals, but I was also helping him expand his platform. And then in 2012, I left him and me and my wife started our own platform in 2013. So 
you know, I've been mentoring people for a long time. But what I love to tell people is my first success story was myself. And see, I believe that to my core that the first person, whatever your skill set is, when you start teaching other people, you have to have done it for yourself. Right? Like, yeah. if, like, like, I would never go hire a fitness trainer that that learned from a book. <laughs> if if they were 50 pounds overweight, but even if they were really good, um, you know, book smart, I'd be like, dude, you're not walking the walk. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, you're talking the talk, but you're not walking the walk. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's how I got down the mentorship path. And I just found that that was like, and it still is, by the way, after 20 years, it's extremely fulfilling for me to take somebody that is not financially free, that has a job, that pays a lot of tax and, and to be able to move the needle for them and have them, you know, have cash flow from their investments and pay less tax. And ultimately, you know, some people, you know, hundreds of my mentees have quit their jobs. Yeah. I love it. Um, so 2013, you started the company. What was the, what was the, and I want to frame this appropriately because as you're actively investing, needless to say, that takes time <laughs> and energy and focus. Um, but as you're building the business, um, what was the what was the general growth rate of it? So it's an eight figure company now. Did it start slow? Did it start off huge? How did you launch it? What did that look like? And how has it changed? Well, yeah, I mean that's a great question. And so you know, if if you remember part of what I just shared from for six years, I was mentoring people in a basically my mentors organization. So like, yeah. I, I was already, you know, they say, well, what is an expert, right? 10,000 hours in a subject. So I was already a, 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 an expert. I'm saying an expert. I, I guess that's what they would say, right? I was already an expert because I was investing from 02 to 13. But then we started our own company. And, and Brad, we had to learn, um, <laughs> you know, in my org organization, I was an employee. And he would do all the marketing, all the advertising. He would fill the room. He would make the offer from the stage. And then I would fulfill the product. And and all of a sudden, now me and my wife are launching our own company. So we got to learn the the marketing, the sales, the, the advertising, um, you know, create an offering, you know, deliver it from the stage or from a funnel or, or from whatever, which we're doing all of that now. And I could just say the first year in business, we did under a half a million dollars. But like I was really like, I think we did like four or 500K, but just under a half million in 2013. And I, you know, I don't know the exact rates, but it went from, you know, say 450 to maybe 1.2 to 2.8 to 4.6. And then we kind of pl plateaued around 7 million. And, and that was our plateau. And, and we kind of stayed at that level for a couple years, but then we found a new mentor. And that was the gentleman that you mentioned in the beginning of the, when, when we started our conversation, Pete Vargas. And so, you know, Pete now is like a strategic advisor for me personally and for our organization. Mm. And just in, in the last 18 months, I mean, we have grown, you know, 33% or, or more off of a $7 million revenue. So like we're on this upward trajectory again. So, awesome. um, yeah, and I'm excited because we, we have like, you know, big plans for the next three to five years to continue growing at, you know, we, we, we're going to continue growing at a, at a double digit pace, put it that way. What, um, what do you think, uh, caused the plateau and what do you think Pete contributed that helped, uh, break it and accelerate past it? Well, yeah, this is going to be a great infomercial for Pete Vargas, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get, we'll get Pete on to talk and uh, promote yeah. himself too. He's very good at that. <laughs> but well, I know that I'm Pete just, has a lot of success stories, so it's, uh, I don't feel bad about that. Well, well, here's the deal. I don't either, uh, you know, and, you know, that's why I mentioned it. But here's the deal. Whenever in my life I felt like I was at a point where I could do it on my own, I've plateaued. So what that could be in mm. my, that's in, that's in my apartment investing business. I, in, in my investing business, I got stuck. I was comfortable doing 20 to $30 million deals. And then I met a guy and I became his friend and he, you know, kind of took me under his wing unofficially. And we did a hundred million dollar deal together. 
and and now I learn from him and I watch him and I you know I I, I went to Grant Cardone and I paid Grant for one on one mentoring sessions and I wasn't I wasn't asking Grant about apartments because he does apartments too but I was I wanted to have proximity to Grant because I wanted to know how he thinks so big. You know, how he's so confident in his mindset and how he just thinks about doing big things. And so every time I go to Grant Cardone, I walk out wanting to do a bigger deal. And so it was the same with our education business. You know, we just kind of, we got to a level where I got comfortable. I stopped growing. I, I was the, I thought I, I knew everything I needed to know, seriously. And, and we plateaued. And then, you know, one dot led to another and that's when i was introduced to pete and i learned that there's oh my gosh there's so much more out there and and brad that's where we went because pete also encouraged me he said brad you need to be in some of these other masterminds where you're not the biggest fish like right now like for a while i was the biggest fish in my little fish bowl and so you know there's always another level there's and you need to learn from people that are one or two or three levels above you and so whether that's been like, like, I know you love to work out. And so do I, I'm, I'm on day 51 right now with 75 hard. And, you know, when you want to take your physique, your health, your energy, your business, your investments to the next level, you need to be playing with people one or two or three levels above you and learning from them. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with you on that front. <clears throat> it's uh, more comfortable to not do that, right? Um, to avoid the confrontation, avoid people questioning your beliefs. Um, and it's also easy to <clears throat> settle into this idea that your business is special and unique and you know the nuances and the outside people that are giving you advice just don't know the details. On a lot of levels, business is the same. Every business has sales, marketing, operations, some, some form of technology today more than likely. And then the back end, you have to deal with the taxation side of things, um, which only becomes relevant as you get bigger. Uh, but uh, yeah, I love hearing that. So was it specifically access to new people that you think helped break through or the specific uh, tactics that you started deploying? Was there a specific strategy that helped uh, create that? Yeah. So yes. And, and just to go back to when we started our new company in 2013, I mentioned I was already an expert in apartment investing, but I didn't understand marketing and sales and filling in the event business. Mm -hmm. And so we went, we had a mentor back in 2012 and 13 that we learned how to speak from the stage and how to, you know, fill the room and, and then how to convert people from a, 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 an event attendee into a high ticket client. And so that really moved the needle and got us to a certain level. But then when I met, like, like I said, we stopped, we stopped learning and growing for a year or two and we plateaued. So here's the deal. We met Pete um actually through the the grant cardone folks because mm. they work they work with pete mm -hmm. and and so what turned out to be just an introduction what led to a business arrangement between pete's organization and mine and so pete has a you know pete works with some of the biggest and best names in the world he works with grant cardone tony robbins dean graziosi just to name a few and All our so clients. <laughs> and and he's and, and yeah and he's out there like he sees what works with them for sure and he and and so you know the things that work with them you know he's able to share with us because a lot of what's working with them are his strategies and so um i think part of it is strategy um knowing what's working right now and see what's working now.